The 4x4 Podcast, episode 142, is brought to you by LT Wright Knives. These heirloom quality pieces will outlast your adventure, so plan well, drive safely, and carry an LT Wright knife. To find out more online, go to ltwrightknives.com. That's L-T-W-R-I-G-H-T, knives.com. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network Podcast. You're listening to the 4x4 Podcast, the podcast all about four-wheeling, overlanding, off-road racing, and the outdoor lifestyle. We talk about news, tips and tricks, answer your questions, and interview big and little names in the off-roading world. So whether your rig is busted and you're in the shop wrenching on it or on your way to the trail, join us and we'll keep you plugged in on topics to help you get away. Here's your host, Dan. Hey, what's up? Uh, It's just me this time, uh, and I have something very embarrassing to confess. I found a memory card uh, that had some interviews that are extremely old that were previously unpublished. Uh, So I have something pretty special for you today. This is an interview that I recorded just over a year ago, so like 13 months ago, with Ryan Huck uh, from Extreme Terrain. And even though it was recorded so long ago. It is still a evergreen, uh, some content that that's good no matter when you listen to it. So, uh, there's been a lot of new videos and new content and new products added over at extreme terrain. And I, I highly recommend you go check it out. Uh, but without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to that interview with Ryan Huck from extreme terrain. Today on the podcast, I am pleased to have Ryan Huck from Extreme Terrain. How are you doing, Ryan? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Dan. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. Uh, well, before we start talking about Extreme Terrain, I'd kind of like to get to know you and some of your background first. So uh, how is it that you got into off-roading, and, and what is it that you're driving? Sure, yeah. I, uh, I started out, um, I think how a lot of people do, I had a, a stock TJ uh, got on some of the forums because I always liked the way that a lifted Jeep looked and it, it really <laughs> snowballed from there, um, from, you know, what, what can you do to it, um, into off-roading videos and pictures, and then finally actually getting out there at some of our, our local spots and our, our local off-road park. So actually I actually have the same Jeep that I had back in the day, back in high school, uh, when I first started driving, when I got my license, it's a 98 TJ, uh, with the four liters straight six in it. And uh, it's been through a couple of lift kits at this point. It currently has kind of a Franken lift on there, um, running um, about five and a half inches of lift, roughly, with a set of 35s on it. Uh, Rubicon Express springs, rock crawler, control arms, JKS, uh, track bars. So, like I said, kind of a, a mishmash of different parts. Um, but it works works really, really well for me. I have the, the factory uh, Dana 3035 housings, but chromoly shafts, uh, Detroit True Track up front, air bear locker in the rear. So um, a really, really nice combination that gets me pretty much everywhere I want to go. Awesome. Yeah, those, uh, I've found that the chromoly axle shafts really make such a huge difference in the, uh, the longevity of those axles. They absolutely do. I mean, that's one of the first things you'll find if you hop on the forums and start Googling around on the, the TJ uh, Dana 35 is if you run 35s on it, it's going to explode, you know, instantly. There's there's no chance you can wheel the thing like that, especially if you're going to lock it. Um, but like I said, I've, I've had really good luck. Um, it, it was my daily driver for a long time. I, I know a lot of people are in that same situation. So you take it off road. You want to have a great time. You want to challenge yourself with the vehicle, but in the back of your mind, you know, you got to drive it home. And even though that it's not my daily driver now, our local off road parks about two and a half hours away. And that's a, a very expensive tow if you do need to, uh, to get a flatbed at home. So I'm always a little bit easy on things, but, uh, certainly able to run some, some blues and some blacks and have a great time out there. Yeah, so that's one of the things that I really encourage with the listeners for the 4x4 podcast, though, is to to learn and drive with finesse because, you know, your driving skill increases, and then by the time you get to a more built vehicle, you'll be able to tackle that tougher terrain without any real challenge or without as much a challenge anyways. Absolutely. I think a lot of people, they get on the forums like I did in the beginning and they think I I need this, I need that, I need to build my Jeep to a certain level. And yeah, that stuff helps to get you where you want to go and to get you down some of those tougher trails. But it is very much about the driving skill 
um, I've found. And and you can you can take a stock jeep to places that you never thought it could go before if you you have the finesse and you have the uh, technological or the uh, the technical um, understanding of how to pick a line, how to work with a spotter, and uh, you know eventually you, you do get those bigger tires and and a little bit more suspension travel, and you can really hit the big stuff. Oh yeah. But one of the things that I, I encourage people is, you know, the very first and the best upgrade that you can do for your off-road vehicle, it doesn't matter what kind it is, is to get some actual driver training uh, because then you yeah. can apply that to anything. Absolutely. Yeah, I would agree with you 100%. Uh, Rouse Creek Off-Road Park, our local off-road park, offers a couple of different um, off-road 101 courses. They also offer some recovery 101 courses that they have some some really great um, turnout for and you, you end up with people that ha- have a, a lifelong love of, of off-roading them because they have that base and they're able to go out there and have a great time awesome yeah that was one of the things i was going to ask you next is uh, what part of the country are you in and uh, do you have any favorite off-roading places yeah, we're in uh, Southeast PA. So I, I live about a half hour north of Philadelphia, right up 95. So unfortunately, not a ton of, of great off-roading uh, in the immediate area here. Uh, so I've mentioned a couple of times now, off uh, Rouse Creek Off-Road Park, there there are probably our most local park out in uh, Tremont, PA. It's a good two, two and a half hour ride from here. So it's, uh, you know, a, a good investment uh, to get out there, but it's it's a great park. It's a great place to have, to have fun. Uh, you can certainly get down into the Pine Barrens in New Jersey if you wanted to do a little bit more of the mud stuff and, and sand and just kind of get the tires off-road a little bit, but not get into quite as much of the technical rock crawling stuff. Nice. Well, I'm sure being uh, with Extreme Terrain, you've, you've ventured outside of the uh, p- the you know, Atlantic and uh, Northeast area. Is there any other areas of the country or of the world that you've explored? Uh, yeah, actually, just recently, uh, we were out in California, in Southern California at Big Bear Lake, and we were able to do some off-roading there. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to bring my rig out there, but we worked with a, a great uh, rental company, uh, Big Bear Jeep Rentals, and went out there and wheeled a couple of their JKs for the day and, and had a blast out there. Um it was really interesting uh, for me to see the difference between wheeling on the West Coast and wheeling on the East Coast. Of course, you watch the videos, you see the pictures, you, you read, you know that the terrain's different. The way you set up the vehicle is going to be a little bit different. Some of the driving skills is going to be a little bit different depending on the trail you're hitting. But to actually experience it was really exciting for me. And we were actually able to make a video about that uh, East Coast versus West Coast wheeling that should be going live on our YouTube channel in, uh, in not too long here. So for those guys that aren't necessarily able to, uh, to pick up and travel out west, like I'm fortunate to be able to do now that I'm working with Extreme Terrain, um, you know, they can at least check out that video and, and get a feel for it. Awesome. Well, this is a pretty good time to transition uh, because I I actually uh, first heard about you guys. Uh, I discovered you on YouTube. Uh, you seem to have a really good presence there, a lot of subscribers. Can you tell me a little bit about how that's going? Yeah, we're really, really excited to have just passed uh, the 50,000 subscriber mark uh, right after the first of the year. When I started on the video team at Extreme Terrain, it was it was very small. It was in, in its infancy. We were just starting to build out what we wanted the channel to look like and um, and hoping to get to where we are. And of course, uh, never satisfied, always, always looking to reach as, as many people as we can. Um, the bulk of the videos on the channel are going to be product review videos. I'm somebody who's been through, uh, you know, multiple lift kits on my Jeep. I've helped many people install lifts on all kinds of other Wranglers. I've been wheeling. I've done the trail fixes. I've, I've had a lot of hands-on experience and, um, and installed a lot of lift kits, you know, with Extreme Terrain dot com and a lot of other parts as well so essentially being able to give a very honest product review comparing to a lot of other products out there not just saying this one's the best because this is the only one i've ever touched um and and helping our customers to make a best well-informed decision on how to build their dream jeep is really what we're all about and and again that's the bulk of the videos on the channel Uh, we also do have a lot of those other content videos that we've been building out recently uh the video i mentioned east coast versus west coast wheeling we're doing one uh kind of two-door jk versus four-door jk what's better on the road and off-road we have quite a few a few of those videos that are out and also a bunch that are coming up nice yeah, I'll make sure to have a link to your YouTube uh, page on the show notes for this episode of the podcast. And it's funny, I actually discovered uh, the, the product review video that I saw was not even <laughs> one for Jeeps. It was one for a pickup truck. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Which, yeah, we have uh, a couple a couple of uh, sister channels, yeah. 
Yeah, and it's funny because there's really not any of those here that I, as I'm scrolling through, these are all very Jeep focused, and I like that they really have kind of a unity of feel. Just looking at them, um, they they're very well put together. Thank you, thank you very much. It's, it was something that we we were really striving for. So when you're going through each one of the the product pages on the website, there is that level of consistency. For instance, if you're trying to buy a set of fender flares, you can click on each one of the the options and you'll see the same pictures from the same angles in the same order on the same color vehicle so it gives you a, a really clear comparison um, and we again strive for the same thing through our youtube videos there so it's it's a consistent feel you know what you're going to get when you click on the video if you're just interested in the installation you can hop right to that section of the video um, and it makes it very very user friendly so again you can you as a customer are able to get that that product that you're going to love that's going to really work for you and for what you want uh, your jeep to be able to do yeah that's that's awesome and it's funny i occasionally get questions from from listeners how to put together good videos and i am obviously not the right person to do video because i do an <laughs> audio podcast um but uh it sounds like you got you work with a whole team of people doing this is is that actually the case yeah, absolutely. We have uh, a whole install team uh, that I work with very closely. Uh, those guys are actually putting the products on the vehicles um, at this time because we've grown as much as we, we have. And I just wasn't able to do all of them <laughs> by myself, unfortunately. So have that whole team. Those guys are really great. Uh, a, a whole team of um, videographers actually shooting the videos, a team of editors putting everything together. So it's definitely a, a, a team effort. Um, and I think we've we've really honed it into where we are kind of a well oiled machine. We're able to punch out a lot of videos that are very high quality, and they really get across what what we want to get across. And that's I think that's I've mentioned it a couple times now. Really helping our customers to build their dream vehicle is kind of what sets us apart from some of the other people that just sell Jeep parts out there. They just want to sell you a part. It doesn't really matter to them what it is or how well it fits into your, your ideal picture of what your Jeep's going to look like. We're a little bit different in the way that we want to make sure that we understand what you want to build and we give you all the information possible to make the best one form decision. So definitely a little bit different there. And uh, I like what that's, what that's allowed our customers to do and, and to build. Yeah, so in talking about uh, extreme terrain, uh, obviously you sell all kinds of uh, different uh, parts for, for Jeeps specifically. Um, mm -hmm. What is the kind of the background? How did uh, extreme terrain kind of become a company? Yeah, extreme terrain, uh, is, uh, I'm not even going to give you a, a number of years because I'm not sure exactly. I've been with the company uh, about four years now, so longer than that, obviously, um, has been around. And we, we just decided that we wanted to give customers a place where they can go get uh, all the information that they need about all the parts that they might want to install on their, their Jeep, make good, well-informed decisions, be able to compare things one, side by side, one to the other, and, and really be able to build their Jeep so they can get out there and they can have a great time on the trails. Awesome. Awesome. Has there been any uh, favorite products that you have just been just head over feels? These things are awesome. And you went out and got it yourself? Yeah, um, I, I built pretty much my whole Jeep before I started. Not that it's ever done, as we all know, project, project vehicles of any kind, especially <laughs> Jeep, never done. Either you're the braking and you're upgrading or you're just upgrading for the sake of upgrading. But uh, I, I honestly haven't uh, installed a whole lot of new parts on my Jeep recently. Um, some of the, the new parts uh, that have come out that I've been pretty excited about, we actually built a Jeep for Brian Deegan. Um, he has just launched the Deegan 38 line of Jeep armor that we have on the website. So we built him a Jeep incorporating all of the armor products that he's offering and, of course, couldn't just leave it stock other than that. So we went and installed a big lift kit. Uh, and Terraflex has a new lift kit offering the Falcon shocks. Um, so there were three-way adjustable uh bypass uh, shocks and they just drove road amazingly on the road off the road um, i was really excited to be able to help with the installation of that lift kit and then actually be able to take it out on the road get a feel for it and actually wheel it nice well since you're kind of in the business um have you uh been able to spend any time up close and personal with the, the new jeep jl I have a little bit, yeah. Um, we went out to the LA Auto Show when the JL was revealed, and we were able to get up close and uh, and look at it and drool on it a little bit. Um, we hope to be to be getting one pretty soon. Um, 
to be able to actually do some some videos on it, do some comparisons to the JK, take it out, wheel it, um, and as the aftermarket's able to catch up, start start modding it and, and really build something pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, it should be happening here pretty soon. Uh, I've I've seen yeah. from around the internet they're showing up at dealerships already. Yeah, they're, they're starting to trickle in, so we're uh, we're just looking for the looking for the right one. Hopefully, it won't be too long. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be a long time until they show up in my neighborhood um, and I get to see them. But I, up here in Alaska, I've seen them running up and down the highway doing their uh, cold weather testing for quite some time now. Oh, yeah. That seems like a good place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not lately, but uh, it was funny. A couple couple days ago, I left Fairbanks and it was negative 26. And by the time I got down to Anchorage, it was almost 30 degrees. So wow. It doesn't really count as cold weather testing there, but... <laughs> I thought it was cold here. We're seeing highs of 15, but that's nothing like negative 26. That's for sure. Yeah, I've seen some uh, some memes lately about uh, Alaska sent exporting the cold weather down to the lower 48. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, are you guys going to be at any uh, shows and events this uh, coming summer? Uh, we're still putting our, our calendar together, uh, seeing exactly where where we're going to head. Um, currently, we're talking about possibly heading out to King of the Hammers, uh, which isn't a Jeep specific event, but especially in the Everyman class, you'll see some some Jeeps or or what uh, buggies based on the Jeep anyway. Um, so, hoping to get out there, um, hoping to get to Easter Jeep Safari um, this year as well. That's probably the biggest off road and also kind of trade show event. Always brings their prototypes out there, so that would be one that I would I'd love to get out to. Um, possibly Jeep Beach Week down in Daytona. Um, really, still still looking at every option, and and I would love to get to every one of them, but we'll yeah. uh, we'll see what we can do with the schedule. Yeah, that summer uh, show schedule is is very full across the country, um, but I know there's a bunch of them in Texas, okay. just all all over the world. Uh, but it, definitely mm-hmm. Easter Jeep Safari. That's going to be one that. A lot of people go to, and it is very Jeep specific, obviously, since it's in the title. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. That that's one I have not yet had a chance to go to, and and I've pulled the audience before and uh, kind of seen, you know, if somebody's going to to Easter Jeep Safari or going to Moab, is Easter Jeep Safari the the time to go for a first visit? Um, and I think <laughs> the overall answer is no, because it's flooded with people, uh, but it's still a great right. time. So, have have you been to yeah, Easter Jeep yeah. Safari before? I haven't. No, no, that would definitely be a, a first for me. And I can, I can imagine just from the, the videos and the pictures and the coverage that I've seen of it, that it would definitely be a, a crowded time to go if you just want to get out and hit the trails and, and, you know, not, not be running into somebody else uh, every couple of feet on the, yeah. on the trails there. But um, as far as what else is there, being able to just see Jeeps from all over the country, all different styles of builds, being able to see what Jeep brings out there and all the other vendors, I think it would definitely be a good time. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully that's one we can make it out to. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Right on. Well, has there, uh, has there been any modifications that you've, you've done, uh, or any products that you've done and done a review on and it's been just, uh, like one end of the spectrum or the other, this is a, a do it, or this one is a recommend do not buy. Yeah, there, there are definitely a, a couple of, uh, I won't say do not buys because everything we have on the site, we have it there for a reason. Someone, someone is looking for it. Um, I just want to make sure that they have all the information and they're buying it for the right reason. I personally am not a big fan of aftermarket and quote unquote upgraded uh, steering stabilizers or steering dampeners. Uh, if you go out on the forums, you can find some really bad information about what they are designed to do and what they should be used for. A lot of people have a wobble or they have some bump steer and they think I'll throw a new steering stabilizer on there, an upgraded one, I'll spend a ton of money on one, it'll fix all my problems. Um, but that's that's simply not the case with those. So yeah. uh, I'm always very careful uh, with, with the reviews of those steering stabilizers in particular. Um, there are certainly some great ones out there as far as the quality goes and, and as far as having a lot of options um, and and uh, different ways that you can use them, adjustability and whatnot. Um, but I want people to know that if you have a wobble, you have this, you have that, it's not something that's going to be solved, solved by a steering stabilizer, fix that problem. If you have a broken or bent steering stabilizer and you want to upgrade, then that's what they're there for. Yeah, yeah. I found that that's really just masking the actual problems. Uh, so a, a lot of people run without exactly. stabilizers exactly. just because um, it, it's not completely necessary and it does 
uh, kind of reveal your actual mechanical issues pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think I've probably said that in, in most, if not all, of the, the review videos <laughs> that I do say that it is a luxury and not a necessity, a steering stabilizer. So, um, you know, if you have a properly set up steering system, you don't need it. It might take a little bit of the shock out when you're driving on the road, but it's not necessary. Um, you know, all those other issues, they have a way to diagnose them. You have a way to fix them. Do that first. And then if you want to throw a stabilizer on there, go for it. Right on. Well, with the uh, the new Jeep JL coming out uh, sometime soon uh, to a dealership near you, is that something that you're going to be looking at picking up for yourself, or are you going to stick with your tried-and-true TJ? I'd, I'd love to get my hands on a JL. Um, we'll, we'll see exactly how things are, are going to play out here. Uh, we have a one-car garage here, and we already have quite a few cars and motorcycles. So I don't know that the wife's going to let me get one more, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to work on talking her into it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I totally get that. I'd love to have one, but uh, I, I think I've recently decided that the uh, the '99 Jeep Cherokee that I have it's going to be in the family until it just completely disintegrates. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, I saw some pictures of it. The thing looks awesome. It looks really well built for sure. Um, and I think my my TJ will probably be the same way. Um, like I said, I've had it had it for quite some time now. It's been. I want to say three seasons since I did a frame swap on it. I was doing an oil change, noticed a little bit of frame rot, frame rot, and it was never a thought of let's get rid of it and get another one. It was just how do we fix this the best way? So I, I went and, and bought a, a really great frame in, in great condition, coated it inside and out, did the frame swap in the driveway uh, over a couple of weekends and, and got that squared away. So uh, very much the same mentality. It's not going anywhere. It's going to be here, get passed on. If I do get a JL, it'll just be another one added to the stable. There you go. That, that's awesome. Do a complete frame swap. I'm sure that took a, a fair amount of work. Did you uh, have a, a wrench party and bring over a bunch of friends to do that? Or maybe the video team? I, <laughs> yeah, no, that was actually... Uh, yeah. That was something I did mostly on my own. Uh, I did have my dad come over and, and give me a hand with a little bit of the heavy lifting. Um, but yeah, it was it was a it was a big job for sure. The the only frame that I was able to find locally that was really clean and in great condition was one for a uh, 2.5 liter. So I had to cut off the motor mounts and, and reweld those. So definitely a big project, but um, I'm glad I did it. It was it was well worth it. Yeah, I'm sure it was hard to find a good clean straight frame there in the the Northeast where. They're running salt, uh, pretty heavy. Yeah, up here in the salt belt. Yeah, it's it's definitely tough. A lot of people actually they'll go down south uh, with a trailer and they'll bring back a dozen of them at a time. Uh, <laughs> straight ones, and they'll they'll sell them at you know pretty decent markup. But I was able to find one that I, I think the Jeep must have been from down south at one point because it was it was way too clean to live its whole life up here. Um, so I kind of got lucky when I needed one. I found one that was in great condition and. I, uh, I keep it coated with a product called uh, fluid film, which I definitely recommend to anybody who's in the, uh, the Northeast here in the salt belt with us. Uh, it's a spray on product. You can just coat the whole underside of your vehicle and it does a really nice job of keeping uh, a corrosion resistant layer on everything over the winter. Nice. So I assume that's something that you need to reapply uh, periodically. Yeah, I find myself doing it uh, once a year, usually in the fall, I'll try to catch it right before it gets real cold. Um, I just have a, an old uh, paint spray gun that I hook up to my compressor, and it's great because it's a biodegradable product. It's it's the same mentality, the same idea as as pouring you know old motor oil inside the frame, what the guys used to do way back in the day. Uh, but it's I believe it's linseed oil, and I'm not sure on that. Either way, it's it's an organic. Um, a biodegradable material that you can spray on. It lasts right around six months to a year, depending on how you use your vehicle. And um, yeah, there, there are components that I put under my Jeep that were new that I keep spraying every six months, every year or so, and they still look brand new. So I uh, definitely recommend it. It's a good product. Awesome. Well, I'll definitely check that out. I spent uh, a couple years living in upstate New York, so I have some of that salt uh, has done its work on my Jeep. Um, and now, of course, I take it from that to here in the Arctic, where uh, salt no longer becomes effective at negative 20, so they don't use it. <laughs> so yeah, that, cool. <laughs> that comes with its own set of problems. Sure, I can imagine. Yeah, where do you uh, where do you get that fluid film? Because that may be something that I have to start recommending to folks. Uh, is that something you guys yeah, saw on that... the website, or is that just something you pick up at a big box store? Yeah, we we haven't started adding that. That's it's something that I've uh, I brought up a couple of times. We may end up having it on the site here uh, pretty soon. I actually found that you can buy a gallon of it uh, just off of Amazon. 
Um, and then you can also get it in like an aerosol spray can if you don't have, you know, a paint spray um, with a compressor that you want to spray it out of. Uh, so I know Amazon carries it. I think there are a couple of stores, um, you know, brick and mortar store locations that you can go to as well, but I'm not sure where, where those are. So I picked up a gallon of it a few years back and it's, it's lasted me all these years and probably get a couple more years out of it. Nice, nice. Uh, so I was just going through uh, the the build sheet that you have on your on the, your profile there at uh, extremeterrain.com, dot com, and I mm-hmm. noticed you've got the the Viair onboard air. Uh, how do you like yes. that? Because that's something I've been looking at for a while too. Yeah, I love it. I, I love that system. Uh, as long as you have a spot to mount the the tank, I believe it's a two and a half gallon tank, so it's a little bit uh, a little larger. But as long as you have a spot to mount it, it's great. Um, it does a really nice job of filling up my 35, 1250s, uh, pretty quick. I usually run around 15 pounds, uh, without beadlocks on the trail and coming back up to around 32 pounds to, uh, to street pressures pretty quick with that system. Um, puts out enough CFM that you could, if you needed to run an air tool to do some trail repairs, uh, for a while before I had my compressor hooked up here at, at the new house in the garage, I was using it to fill tires on lawnmowers and cars and everything else they need to. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great system. Um, definitely recommend it. If there was one thing that I would add to it, it would be a, a second compressor to get it to, uh, to fill up the tank even quicker, but it works really well right out of the box as well. Nice. Yeah. I've been looking at that. Um, the, the rocker skids that I have on my Jeep are actually, mm-hmm. uh, sealed up and they're pre-fitted with, uh, with fittings so I can actually use them as air tanks and they're 11 gallon, of air really capable uh, and been, oh, wow. they've been pressure yeah. tested up to 300 psi so i i've been looking very long at which uh which air compressor to add and then finding the place to do it I, i've tried but i already have a pile of parts in my garage that i have to install <laughs> before i buy any more so there you go yeah it's a, it's not a bad problem to have though <laughs> yeah i think yeah. that the, the buyer the heavy duty system i think it comes with buyers 400 c uh, compressor, which which moves some pretty good CFM. A lot of the time, these compressor companies, I'm sure as you know, they like to tout the the PSI, the max PSI. And for most of what we're doing, especially if you're filling up tires, it doesn't matter if it'll push you know a ton of PSI. It's all about CFM. Yeah. You can fill up those big tires and move a lot of volume. Uh, so the 400 C does a great job. If you could double up, get get two compressors, just you know whatever's going to move the most air for you. Uh, but that's awesome when you have those kind of built in tanks already. Yeah, I had a, a buddy uh, build them who actually worked for a fire extinguisher um, company or a fire systems company. So he welded on pressurized tanks all day long. So he seemed like the perfect guy to build me some tanks slash rocket yeah. guards. <laughs> Sounds like he's qualified for sure. Yeah, that's that's a great spot for it. I've seen people uh, do them with bumpers. Um, even have water tanks in bumpers and, and a small compressor to, to pressurize that water as well for more of like an overland, overland style rig. Uh, if you're doing some camping to have actual running water coming out of your bumpers is pretty cool. So, uh, it's, it's amazing what people come up with. Oh yeah. So it kind of like we're, uh, discussing specific products. Is there a team at extreme terrain that somebody could call if they have questions about anything in specifically to kind of get some, some answers there? Absolutely. Yeah. We, we refer to, uh, you know, everybody on our customer service team as Jeep experts, and that's not just a, a marketing gimmick. Uh, everybody has, most everybody has a Jeep, drives a Jeep, whether it's daily or just on the trail. Uh, they, they really know what they're talking about. They're not just reading off of a script to you. These are true Jeep enthusiasts that, that love Jeep as much as, as you do, as much as, as our customers do. So, um, yeah, that 1-800 number is always available, um, right up at the, at the top of the website there. Uh, anybody can go there and they'll get somebody, a real person that they can talk to, to ask questions. And, and like I said, those guys have a ton of great information. Yeah. I'm actually looking at the website right now. So for anybody that is listening and can't write it down, they can just go over to our show notes, but it's one eight four four. 887-6500, and it looks like your hours uh, go to 11 p.m. Eastern time, which is perfect uh, for those guys on the West Coast that get off work and they just want to, you know, get a quick answer on something. There's still time they can get in there and talk to somebody. Absolutely, yeah, they can certainly give a call. And something that we've added, I'm going to say recently, it's been a couple of years now, um, is our chat feature on our website as well. So if you're if you're on the website. 
you don't have your phone near you, you don't feel like talking to anybody, uh, you can hop on the chat. Uh, they actually have even longer hours than that, even extended hours through chat. Um, if the little chat bubbles up on the website there, that means there's somebody available to, uh, to talk to. So you can click on that. Um, you can, of course, link back and forth between different pages, different options, different questions that you have, and you're going to get the same uh, the same caliber, the same level of Jeep, Jeep expert on that chat that you would if you called in. So that's another uh, another great resource. Man, I love those chat functions. And it's funny, yes, I do host a podcast and I talk to people uh, for, for this, but my wife says that I would do just about anything to avoid having to talk to somebody on the phone. <laughs> and that chat function is <laughs> I perfect. I think a lot of people are like that. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is really great. For some reason, it's, it just makes it that much easier than rather than picking up the phone. It's it's great. It's been very very popular, um, and you know I, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but it, our, the company as a whole is really about helping to make sure that our customers are getting the best product for what they want to do. And if they're not comfortable picking up the phone, let's give them another way to to get in touch with us and to get that information that they need. And the chat's been really great for that. Yeah, this is awesome. And just looking through everything that you've got here, it's everything from tools, armor, bumpers, drivetrain, engine, exhaust, exterior, interior bits, lift kits, lights, suspensions, tops, winches, and wheels and tires. Man, that's that's an amazing thing to for somebody to come home and find a pile of uh, tires and wheels waiting at their doorstep. <laughs> Yeah, that's something that, that we, we were really excited to be able to offer, not just wheels, not just tires, but wheels and tires mounted up, balanced, uh, ready to go. So they come in very large boxes, and you uh, <laughs> you can go ahead and, and get them bolted right up to your Jeep. You're not making a trip back and forth to a mountain balance shop. Um, everything's right there for you. It makes it makes it really, really easy. Uh, I know a lot of guys, they get their big lift kit installed. They still have their small tires. Looks like they're running around and they skip leg day. Uh, they want to get those, those <laughs> tires to fill out those big open wheel, wheel arches, and that's a great way to do it. Nice. Well, uh, I, as I was scrolling through, it looks like you guys occasionally do some sweet stakes type of things. you guys have any of those going on right now? We actually just finished one up, and uh, we're giving away uh, two JLs, uh, which, as you know, aren't even quite available yet. But as we get them, uh, we have the build list uh, for them. One of them is going to be completely outfitted with those Deegan 38 parts that I had mentioned before, um, and, of course, a lift um, and some big wheels and tires. The other one is going to be a uh, barricade, uh, barricade Jeep. So barricade is another line of armor that we carry. So fully outfitted with all the barricade armor, again, big lift and tires. Uh, one's a two-door, one's a four-door. And actually, the same winner won both of those Jeeps. So that was something that is a little bit different from from what everybody else out there is doing and uh, and was really cool to be a part of. So I can't wait to get those Jeeps through the doors, get them built, and get them out to the winner. Um, yeah, we have, we've done a couple of other giveaways through, uh, through the past. Um, I actually am not sure exactly what the next one's going to be. It's not live yet, um, but everybody can uh, keep checking back on the website. We'll have a, a nice big banner right across the top once we do get the next giveaway opened up. Usually the way it works is you can enter uh, once a week through the whole amount of time that the giveaway is running. Give yourself the best possible chance to win. And um, I'm always able to be part of what we're giving away. So I always try to make it the, the coolest thing that we can come up with. Make sure uh, the winner is really getting something that they can be proud of. Uh, proud of driving yeah so the same person won both of them yes yeah yeah it's it was a little bit to uh, to wrap my head around at first too when i heard about it but huh. the idea was uh you get two jeeps to share one with a friend you know uh, a spouse have a buddy to go wheeling with whatever it might be keep them both for yourself if you want um, however you want to work it out, you get, you get two Jeeps, a two door and a four door. So no matter what kind of Jeep you like, you're going to, you're going to have one ready to go for you. Well, so being the statistically minded person that I am, that indicates to me that, uh, if somebody enters, they have pretty good chances of winning, <laughs> especially if they're yeah. going back every week to enter, you know, increase their odds. Absolutely. Yeah. That, you know, yeah, the idea there is hopefully you'll, you'll come back, you're, you'll enter and you'll, you'll take a look around and see what other parts you might want to add on to that Jeep that you're going to win. So, uh, yeah, come back, uh, come back often and, and enter as often as possible. Give yourself the best possible chance to win. Right on. Well, Ryan, I just want to say thanks for uh, coming on the show again. Um, and before I let you go, uh, you want to give a rundown on the, the best place for somebody to connect with uh, you or extreme terrain. 
yeah, Extreme Terrain uh, is, is going to be the best uh, the best to go to there. ExtremeTerrain.com will get you right onto our website. Uh, like we talked about, we have the 1-800 number there. Anybody can give a call in during those hours. You can hop on chat. Uh, you can go to Extreme Terrain Videos uh, on YouTube. That'll d- link you directly to our YouTube channel. You can see all the content videos as well as our product review videos. Uh, and those are really going to be the best places to get to us. Right on. Well, thanks again, uh, and I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing the – I'll be entering myself in some of these future giveaways, that's for sure. So I'll be back at ExtremeTerrain.com pretty frequently once I see that next one's coming up. Sounds great. Thanks a lot, Dan. I really enjoyed talking to you. All right, Ryan. I'll talk to you later. All right. Thanks. Thanks again, Ryan, for joining me on the podcast. And I'm sorry uh, that it took me so long to get this published. Um, But good news, I found it, and it turns out – Interviews like yours don't go bad. So uh, be sure to, again, everybody, go check out Ryan uh, and his videos over at Extreme Terrain. So not only does LT Wright Knives make great knives of their own design, but they make knives for other companies too. LT and the crew have made knives for Chris Tanner at Prepared Mind 101. His JX2 and JX3 models are quite popular. Other fan favorite models are the LT produces are the Gary Wines Bushcrafter and Bushcraft Hunter. Designed by a former SAS armorer, Gary Wines, these are very stout bush knives in a Scandi grind. Have you ever dealt with Ben's Backwoods or Lester River Bushcraft? They have been great websites, and LT Wright makes the uh, LA Lagum and Camrat and Lukmu, Luku models for them. Uh, that's a mouthful. I'm going to have to get a LT or some one of those guys over there to explain all these different knives to me. These are also 01 Scandi ground knives, uh, but with a unique design. The Lagum and the smaller brother, the Camrat have very comfortable handles that will allow you to carve and work with them all day long. Need a larger camp knife and Scandi grind with a 9-inch blade? The Luku uh, will get the job done for you every time. LT's most recent collaboration with EC Knives, that's E-S-E-E, is the uh, V2 Collective. This sweeping blade is a Scandi grind of a 1-8 inch A2 steel and a nicely curved uh, micarta handle. The V2 Collective is a unique knife that will tick a lot of boxes for real knife lovers. These are but a few of the knives that LT Wright Knives collaborates on. These heirloom quality pieces will outlast your adventure. So plan well, drive safely, and carry an LT Wright knife. Find out more online at ltwrightknives.com. That's L-T-W-R-I-G-H-T knives.com. And uh, the 4x4 podcast is also supported by listeners like you. Uh, If you would like to support the 4x4 podcast, first I'd say go over to LT Wright Knives. And if nothing else, just say thank you to them for their continued support for the 4x4 podcast. Uh, But you can also uh, support us by shopping on Amazon uh, for everything under the sun. If you first go to the 4x4podcast.com slash Amazon, then we'll get a few cents uh, from your purchase, and that'll help keep uh, the cost of uh, the the website and the media hosting and everything. That'll help cover that. You'll still pay the exact same price that you would normally pay, uh, but a small percentage of that purchase will help keep our servers running and uh, keep the podcast going. And uh, I've got a couple reviews before we close out this episode. Uh, And I may have read these before, but if not, uh, we'll go ahead and read them again. Uh, And these reviews were left on our Facebook page. So you can go over to uh, facebook.com slash the 4 by 4 podcast and see all our posts there. And you can also make a review there. Leave a review if you recommend. Uh, that's one way that you know, really, really helps uh, some of your friends find out about the show. And when you leave those reviews, it typically does post to your feed, which helps generate some discussion. Uh, and if not, you know, just go ahead and tell all your friends about your your uh, favorite off-roading podcast. And if we're not your favorite, then tell all your friends about us anyways. So this is from D.L. Moliu. I'm sorry, I mispronounced your name, D.L. He says, my favorite off-roading podcast. That is excellent. Uh, We also have one from Michael Hyde. He says, great podcast, good info, plenty entertaining. And then lastly, we've got Dalton, 
who says, great podcast. I catch myself on here more than I do at work. And I'm glad that we can spend uh, some of those hours at work with you, Dalton, and to help uh, make work go by a little more quickly and in, in, hopefully more enjoyable. Now, when you're done listening to the 4x4 podcast, you can head over to the 4x4radio.com and you'll find a huge playlist of all the other shows on the 4x4 radio network. You can just hit play and listen all day long. You'll hear shows from the Center Steer podcast and learn about Land Rovers or the Jeep Talk Show and all the things Jeep related. And now we also have On the Trail with Kevin and Scott. And of course, I cannot forget the Trail Chasers podcast with, uh, with Cody and Matt over there. Uh, Looking forward to the next chance I get to spend on the trail with those two. Those guys are a riot. Now, uh, if you would like to contact us, send an email to the 4x4podcast at yahoo.com. You can find us on Facebook again, like I mentioned, facebook.com slash the 4x4podcast. Uh, We are at the 4x4podcast on the Instagrams and on the Twitters. And lastly, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, We've had a couple voicemails lately, and I want to get some more. You can send that uh, or call in at 719-924-5337 or just hit that speak pipe tool that you'll find over at our website. And I think that is it. So, God bless, tread lightly, and stay safe out there while exploring your world.